Hey, so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit today about religion. Uh, it's a topic I'm very interested in, and uh, it's not something I talk about much. For many, many years, I never ever mentioned religion at all. Uh, it's just sort of how I was brought up, and in business, especially early on, I was kind of taught, you know, you just don't ever mention religion, so I, I just didn't. Um, but I'm, it's a topic I'm very interested in, and it doesn't really... Uh, I don't want to monopolize conversations about Bitcoin or work or other things like that by talking about religion. So I just made a separate video to, to discuss it because I think it is a very interesting topic. And I want to just share some of my thoughts about uh, religion in, in and what is going on right now in the world. Um, and a tiny bit about, uh, you know, sort of some of my recent journey. Um, I have been driven more towards uh, religion and become more, much more religious lately uh, over the last couple of years, especially. I, you know, I've had a long journey, in, you know, evolving uh, beliefs and, and, and everything over, you know, some time, but um, particularly over the last uh, couple of years. Um, and one of the things that uh, really got me thinking, I, I've got to give credit, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, so, someday I'll make a list of, of everybody who influences me on my thoughts, if, if, if I ever have thoughts that are kind of, you know, worthy of that. But, uh, you know, one one person that influenced me is Vin Armani, who's now known as C Cyprianus or Cyprian um, on, on Twitter. Um, he he talked, he was one of the first I heard talk about kind of the Church of Woke, and, and, and he, he uh, talks in general about these, you know, big picture good versus evil, and that that's always been interesting to me. And I've, I'm interested in the old religious texts in all religions. Uh, I don't know. I'm I don't know that much about a lot of religions, um, but I'm particularly interested in the Abrahamic faiths and uh, you know, God of Abraham, the the stories in those religious texts, as well as other religions and the overall discussion of good versus evil. Uh, it's sort of the biggest topic in the world. And what is interesting to me is a couple things. Uh, if you go back through the gospel, the scripture, uh, Quran, and you think about these times, you know, you had people that went through uh, really heavy uh, times, persecution, you know, the, uh, you know, great evils, the, you know, the evils uh, of Pharaoh and, you know, slavery and, and, you know, mass death. And, you know, these, these were very, very, very hard times. And a lot of people turned to religion. I'm interested in that. Uh, the, I was just down in Jamestown and I saw this, um, uh, there's a, there's a relief there, uh, in, um, commemoration of the pastor. I, thought his name might have been Robert Burr. I, I, I should have looked it up first, but the pastor who was with these people for many years, and Jamestown was brutal. I think uh, over half the people died. So here's this guy like providing solace to these people and helping them with their with their faith. Um, but in biblical times, it was even even more dramatic than that, even more death, it, you know, and, and kind of almost everybody was so, something like Jamestown in some ways, you know, life expectancy was low, it was, you know, brutal times. Um, and there's also commonality among all faith or many many faiths and the, those three faiths about ideas of real evil you know actual evil uh you know evil beings you know evil forces uh powers and principalities in the bible it's called um you know the, the uh, in modern times a lot of people a lot of christians in the in the church that i grew up in uh, as a christian um, I was a Christian growing up that, that, um, it's, it, we didn't, we never really talked about Satan. It wasn't really mentioned in our, in our church. And then I went to a couple friends' churches and they were more like fire and brimstone. And then I, when I, when I joined the Navy, I, it was really fascinating because I, I learned from all kinds of people, mostly Christians, but you had a very, very, very wide variety of, of like Pentecostals and, and, you know, Southern Baptists and a lot of the, um, a lot of the black uh, guys that I was in boot camp with uh, were you know, members of these big black churches with like tons of singing and uh, just super different than, you, you know, my church. You know, you had like devout uh, Catholics and, uh, you know, I, it was, it was, um, it was maybe one or two Muslims, one or two Jews, mostly Christians or, or people who didn't disclose or whatever. And then I, one other thing I loved about boot camp was they had this wonderful um, multi-faith uh, 
church service. So on Sundays, um, they had a service for uh, an, anyone, any religion, um, because it, boot camp has 15,000 people or so. So there's, you know, in all the different companies and everything. So there's, um, you know, they had, uh, they usually have uh, chaplains that are, you know, certainly Christians, uh, and usually they have um, Jews, Muslims, um, sometimes Hindu chaplains and other other, other chaplains, uh, uh, and, and they make a welcoming place that even if there's not a chaplain representing that faith, um, that, you know, or even if there's only a few members of that faith, that hopefully they'll be comfortable. So I, I thought it was nice. It was, it was a nice, uh, you know, kind of a light cer ceremony, um, nice break. Um, but anyway, the, the commonality of this, you know, you know, kind of thinking about good, you know, true good versus evil, you know, that is something in the human tradition for a long, long, long time. And a lot of people throughout human history have believed in these sort of these forces or whatever. It really depends on your own belief system. Um, but there are unseen things that, uh, affect the world and, I think everybody would agree with that, and I think everybody would agree that there's some kind of evil thing, right? Um, everybody would would look and say, why did these people sit sit, uh, sit by while this evil happened? You know, why did the Salem witch trial happen? You know, why why would normal people do that? Why, for that matter, are normal people sitting by and allowing grave injustices and, and violations of human rights, even in Western countries, even in Australia and Canada and New Zealand? So. There is real evil in the world, whether you believe that it can be manifested in the form of uh, actual, like, unseen beings, d demons, uh, something like that, or, or you just believe that there is this thing called evil you don't know. And, th and this can be for, you know, atheists and agnostics as well. You don't have to believe in any faith to believe in evil. You know, you be, I think everybody believes in good. You know, there's some kind of good and evil. And there's some kind of, the intangible of what you see in the world now, it's not, and what they call powers and principalities in the Bible, it's not just uh, like evil, like, oh, that's an evil guy who did an evil thing. It's uh, more fuzzy than that. It's more permeating. It's more like, it's a, it's an evil you can feel and sort of breathe. It's, it's, it's mass, uh, you know, they call it mass, for, for, uh, mass uh, formation psychosis, I think. They, they said, I used to just call it mass psychosis. Um, you know, a mass psychotic break. You know, ma mass, uh, you know, it's m more than just bad logic. It's a whole bunch of people willing to do bad things uh, in the name of something that doesn't make sense, just like you had in the Salem, Salem Witch Trials. Um, you know, there was a poll that said that something like, you know, 40% of people in, this, in who are Democrats would, would want people, uh, I think it was imprisoned, if they, you know, tested positive or something, you know, some kind of crazy thing like that. So, you know, there's definitely people out there because we know that they're there because there's people in Australia enforcing these kind of things, putting people in camps because they were exposed to somebody with a positive test. You know, really absurd. Um, so a lot of this thinking about, you know, true good versus evil, it brought me more towards religion and more thinking about God and, and, you know, and also being overwhelmed, being stressed out about this. You know, I don't like to see this kind of ty tyranny. You know, I look at it, it stresses me. I say, how can I fight it? How can I talk logic into somebody? You know, if somebody's wearing a mask on the street by themselves, alone, outdoors, how can I talk logic to them? It's not even my business. I, you know, they can do that if they want, but I feel bad for them because I feel like they have something wrong in their brain you know it's been a little bit broken or maybe a lot broken by society but something's not right and, and they're not even the problem the problem is that the, many of those types of people who have something off because of society the news media propaganda government whatever they're willing some of them some portion of them it may hopefully it's only a few percent but a few percent is enough to do great 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 evil um and in some cases it could be 10 percent or more you know there's, there's people that are just irrational and they're willing to do bad things. You start to view the other uh, side as inhuman or whatever. And they, it's, they're also li living in fear and easy to manipulate. Uh, you know, so I consider these things evil. And I'm thinking, well, you know, how do you fight evil? You know, how do you fight evil? How do you, uh, how do you battle this? How can you, how can you defeat a new and evil religion 
you know, the Church of Woke is very much a religion. It's got its own superstitions and its own, uh, you know, sort of forms of worship and high priests, you know, Fauci, its own language, you know, stuff like that. Um, the, uh, let me just grab this phone. Um, but it's, um, where was I? Yeah, it, you know, just this, this type of, um, you know, overreaching, you know, kind of evil got me thinking about, well, how do you fight that? How do you combat that? You can't combat it with logic, you know, because it's a religion. The Church of Woke is a religion. So you can't go to somebody with any religion. You know, suppose somebody believed in, uh, you know, Norse gods. And, and I mean, there might be some people who believe in that still. Um, but if, if they believed in Norse gods and they thought, and they were doing so, using that as something bad. They say like, okay, Thor wants us to all have a little bit of electric shock to feel the power of Thor's hammer. Everybody gets shocked. Mm, that's weird. But those people, if somebody truly believed that, like if you had people who really believed it, and they're wearing the uniform of Thor, and they're saying, like, this is this is my God, and I believe this. You're not going to convince them with logic. You're not going to say, whoa, 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 hold on. You don't have a moral right to make somebody get an electrical shock. You're not going to listen. You're not going to listen about morality, you know. And that's what you see now with the Church of Woke. You have lack of logic, you know, lack of logic that just doesn't make any sense. And uh, and that's dangerous. So that's one, re one thing that I you know, that brought me more towards religion and thinking about there is solutions to this. God has solutions. God doesn't like oppression, in my opinion. I don't, nobody knows what God says or what is God. And it's impossible probably for us humans to even really fully conceive what God is. You know, something so powerful, all powerful. But it seems that and you could call it the universe if you're more new age. Don't say the word God, just say the universe wants people to raise their consciousness, wants peace. I mean, I think we can all agree on that. It's just right. It's like feels good. I mean, if you're really, really unreligious, just say, does it feel good to have the world be um, more peaceful and happy and raise the consciousness of people and get people out of tyranny? And I think the answer to that is clear. But we have the march of tyranny going on right now. So that's brought me more towards religion, but it also given me more faith. Because I see things like, you know, Omicron is basically a vaccine for the for the COVID, almost. It's like a natural vaccine. It's showing that natural immunity can work, you know. And a lot of these plans don't work. And I think that the world goes through phases of, of faith and not faith. You know, one other interesting point I'll make is just sort of how religious leaders uh, making up churches and other religious organizations now, they're people who, were, who came to power over generally the last 30 to 50 years. You know, many of them are elderly, so, so they, it's over 50 years that they come to power. But either way, uh, whether they came to power 10 years or 50 years ago, um, it was with skills and uh, connections or whatever that were built for a world that's gone now. You know, so most religious leaders have been dealing with dwindling membership, and they're trying to figure out how they can afford to pay, repair the roof and uh, keep the small number of members that they have. And they're doing the regular things that religious leaders do, you know, and funeral rites and weddings or whatever. Uh, but they're not generally out there, like, fighting tyranny. Yet, historically, you know, Jesuit priests, bishops, monks, uh, Sufis have been murdered. You know, historically, the religious people have been murdered because they've been at the front line of fighting tyranny. You know, you look at many, many struggles throughout history, it's been the religious people that were right at the front line saying, no, 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 you don't have a right to do this to me. You don't have a right to do this violence to me. You, I won't wear your signal. I won't wear your thing. I won't do your, uh, you know, mark. I won't take your mark. I won't take your, you know, the substance you're trying to get me to take. And uh, tyrants are worried about religion because it is uh, something they can't control. And if you have somebody who has the faith to say, I will not take the substance you try and make me take. I will not disclose if I've taken it. And I, you're never going to convince me. And I'm not afraid to die because I answer to a higher power than you. That's tyrant's fear. So it's not a coincidence that China is 
bringing Uyghurs into concentration camps. And it's not a coincidence that a lot of authoritarians have broken churches and they ban Bibles and they, uh, they don't want religious people. Tyrants don't want religious people. Pharaoh, I believe, is in, you know, the, um, certainly the, the Quran, the Bible, and the Torah, and is an uh, evil oppressor. And uh, to varying degrees in all of those faiths, God punished uh, Pharaoh for this transgression against man, for, for harming man and oppressing man basically made God so angry, or if you want to use a New Age perspective, the universe needed to set itself right by washing this away, literally washing it away. And uh, I think that can happen. I think that can be a real thing. And again, maybe you're not religious, but you just think of it as, think of it like New Age. Think of it like the universe. The universe does what it pleases. The universe... Um, doesn't answer to you. The universe is master of all. The universe can be very uh, tough and do its own thing. And the universe can also be very merciful. And the universe also seems to, in my opinion, and I use, I'm using universe as kind of a new age term, I call it God, wants you to, uh, humans, all of us, to raise our consciousness and be peaceful. So that's some of the thoughts that I have going on about the world now and the world we're in. And how religion fits into it. And I, I'm very interested in this because I think that you're seeing this in a lot of different places. And I, I think that we have a spiritual gap. I know I did. I had a spiritual gap. Uh, and I didn't even realize it. Um, and, it, you know, I had a lot of, like I said, I started to say earlier, I had a lot of anxiety about what's going on. It stressed me. Um, and there's a, there's a nice thing that people, a lot of people of faith that I respect. Uh, you know, my wife has always had faith in God's plan. And I, I, I many times didn't have the kind of faith she had. But that can be comforting in times of craziness and uh, times of uncertainty. Uh, but it's also kind of, you know, logical. I mean, it's, it's, it's a logical thing to think that, you know, humans have consciousness. There's a lot that we don't understand. There's a lot that is unseen. And there's a lot that we can do to improve ourselves. So I think it... It does make sense, and I think it's a good time for more faith and more spirituality in the world. And uh, so that's just a couple thoughts. I'm curious what your thoughts are on this video. Like I said, I don't never, I don't think I've ever done a video like on, on religion before, but I'd be curious what your thoughts are. Uh, so um, thanks a lot, and have a great day.